In this section, we're going to learn a technique for taking equations that have decimals in them and eliminating those decimals much like we eliminated the fractions in some of our previous videos. So if I take 5.3 minus 2.7x equals 3.8 minus 4.2x, and I look and I would rather not work with decimals. We understand that all that would need to happen in each of these coefficients is for the decimal point to move to the right one. And then they wouldn't be decimals anymore. And we know that the way to make a decimal point move to the right one is to multiply that number by 10. And so just like we multiply by the least common denominator when we were eliminating fractions, we're going to multiply by 10 in this problem because we know that when we distribute 10 through to each term that's going to have the effect of moving the decimal point to the right one place in each number. So what we end up with is 53 minus 27x equals 38 minus 42x. And of course now we need to get x's on one side. I think I'll add 42x to both sides. So we get 53 plus 15x equals 38. We can subtract 53 from both sides. So 15x equals, let's see, the difference of 53 and 38 is 15, so this is going to be negative 15. And so dividing by 15 gives us that x must equal negative 1. So if we don't want to deal with decimals and uh, or if we're specifically asked to solve an equation by eliminating decimals, this is how we can do it. We multiply by 10, decimal points moved over 1, and we no longer had decimals to work with. Now, mu multiplying by 10 is not always the answer. So let's take a look at this example here. So we have 2.8x minus 5.45 equals 2.3 plus 4.05x. Now in the previous problem we multiplied by 10 because the decimal points only needed to move over 1. However, you can see by 5.45 the decimal point would need to move two places here in order for it to be a whole number. So uh, instead of multiplying by 10 to make this decimal point move 2 and then for that matter this decimal point to move 2 we would multiply by 100. So you're going to multiply by whatever power of 10 is necessary to get the number with the most the most digits to the right of the decimal to no longer be a decimal. So we'll multiply by 100 on each side here. Now when we do that, we got to be careful. So even though 2.8 only has one digit to the right of the decimal point, we still need to move the decimal two places because I'm multiplying it by 100. So you have 2.8, so the decimal point moves over one, but then it moves over one more, so we better add a zero there. So we end up with 280x minus 545 equals decimal point moves over 2, 230, plus 405x. So let's go ahead and get x's on one side, constants on the other. So I'm going to subtract 280x from both sides. So this is negative 545 equals 230. And let's see, the difference here is 125, so we have plus 125x. You can subtract 230 from both sides. And so what we get here is 125x on the right. And on the left here, we have 775, but a negative 775. 
And so then we'll go ahead and divide both sides by 125. Okay, so here we can definitely do some reducing. Um, so I could divide both of these numbers by 25, I suppose. So let's do that. 25 goes into both of those. You could just go ahead and divide, I suppose, by um, 125, but I'm going to do it this way. So that's definitely going to give me a negative for sure. Um, 125 divided by 25 is 5. Um, 775 divided by 25, I think I better do some long division over here. 25 goes into 77 three times. Remainder of 2, drop the 5. So 25 goes into 25 once. So we get 31 fifths, negative 31 fifths that is. Um, now five dividing by five does give you an exact decimal. So you also could have had the answer x equals negative 6.2. And that's okay to write it as a decimal because it's an exact decimal. So either one of these solutions would have worked.